Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It is Monday again, and we are here. Tinker's Card Art on my page. I'm Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and we are also, it's my Craft Round the Clock segment. So say hello as you pop in. I know um, it's been already some great crafting this morning. I don't know if you've been watching, but we've had some fabulous crafters on um, the Craft Round the Clock page. So if you do not follow Craft Round the Clock, the description has the link in it, and it is live crafting during the week. Every 45 minutes is a great segment of something. Good morning, Cheryl. Hello. Welcoming everybody in. Can you believe it's Monday again already? I just don't know where the time has gone. But here we are, Monday. And I try to do my segments on Monday, but that's not always the case. So I do appreciate you guys joining in and saying hello when you come in. I'm going to do something crazier today, uh, no crazier than usual. Hey, Tracy. Good morning. And Lisa, thank you guys for coming and popping in. I don't know if you saw the ukulele I painted. Uh, I'm always looking for things to paint besides canvases. I love painting on canvas too, but it really is like a little scavenger hunt when you're out thrifting and flea marketing and yard sailing to find items that you could repurpose. And for a while I've been looking for some old violins, ukuleles, that sort of thing. And I did um, a while back hit a yard sale, which I got a few ukuleles to paint. And so I painted one already. It's in a shop down in Anna Maria Island. And I have this other one to paint. And I have a event, an art walk this weekend in Vero Beach. So I wanted to paint one of these up. So you guys are going to sit in and I'm going to get started. It may not be complete, complete, but we're going to go about it and I'm going to show you how I do something like this that I repurpose. Hi Cynthia, Jackie, thank you guys for saying hello. Please say hello as you come in. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, you guys probably know because you are regular watchers, but it does help us create as tremendously. If you just put a comment, an emoji, say hello, spread us out there and uh, it makes it all worthwhile. So thank you. This is just a ukulele I found at a yard sale. I have started by just gessoing the front where I want to paint. Now I know nothing about restringing ukulele, so I am going to paint around the strings, which I did before. And I just scooch the paint underneath. I know people have asked, how'd you paint behind the strings? I just scoop my paintbrush underneath and you will see me do that. If you are a ukulele stringer, you may restring the ukulele. Hi, Cindy. Oh, Cam. Oh, is it gloomy in Michigan? It's a little, uh, it's a little rainy. It's getting a little brighter. It was cloudy this morning, a little gloomy, but much warmer, I'm sure. Um, yeah, you're going to warm up. I think up north, Northeast is going to warm up a little bit this week. Oh, North Dakota, first time. Welcome, welcome, Deb. I'm so happy that you're here. I am an, a painter, an artist. I work in all mediums, mostly acrylic online here. I teach online. I um, have a membership, and I'm so glad that you found us. So please um, join in. Hi, Pam and, and Barbara and Charlotte. So I sound like Miss Jean with all of the names. So I will get to, to working here. If I don't see your comment, I will come back later and address it. So any questions or comments, pop them in there. Good morning, George. I love it when you pop in. It's so nice to see you here. Um, I'm coming up, actually. I'm coming up as a last minute trip next uh, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Um, so anyways, maybe I could, maybe we could catch up. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I'm there. I am just using craft acrylics. I like deco art. I use a lot of liquid text. I like some of the colors and liquid text I get. It's not expensive. It's, um, so it's easy to get started. If you're not a painter and you've got a little inkling, you want to get started, you're in the right place. I usually teach very slow step-by-step -step methods in my classes. Now here, of course, I go a little quicker because we have 45 minutes. This is Maeve, hey mom, watching. Um, oh, you're funny at the hair salon. Maeve, I can't wait to see you too soon. So Maeve will be coming for a visit. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you for popping in. And hello to all the ladies at the hair salon. I just use acrylic brushes. There again, uh, I can get you started without spending a lot of money for all of the fancy supplies. I limit my palette. I don't use a lot of colors. Use um, acrylic brushes. And like I said, I'm using craft paint. Barbara, I found it. It's a ukulele, and I found it at a yard sale. I've been on the hunt for a long while for some. Um, I didn't want to pay a lot of money. I got a great deal for two. I got two at the yard sale, and they're nice ones. I, it's almost a shame, although they could still be played. This one comes with the tuning information, extra strings, all the stuff, a case. So it would be great for someone who actually still wants to play. I am doing it for an art walk in Vero Beach this weekend. 
Hey, Deb. I know. Deb, we should get together someday. Let's try to connect. connect let's connect because um, it's so fun to find people that, um, that have that are interested in painting. I found a great art community here, great art associations. I'm in some shows and, and different events, so it's been a blast art-wise here as well. Um, so let me just jump in and start painting, and then we can chat. I have just sketched out my design with a pencil. I've painted a lot of little tropical scenes since I've been here, so I'm going to use my little other painting for some reference, but I'm going to do a different sky. So let's start. I'm going to start with the sky and work down. Many times I'll work from the far back forward or the top down. This way I won't put my hand in <clears throat> while I am painting. So I want to do a little bit of a different, maybe like a little sunset sky kind of, which is going to have a little um, sun in, and it's going to be tricky painting that little sun in there. Um, so even though this is gesso, it's just a white gesso base so that the paint would adhere a little better and um, take to the surface because it's a little shiny wood surface. And so I'm going to just, I'm going to paint um, a little sun coming, uh, going down, I think. I'm going, a, and, I'm, and I'm touching the, the strings a little bit, but that paint just chips off. And I probably want my little sun a little lighter than this yellow, but at least I can see where it is now. And I don't know if you can actually see it, but I'm just painting a little bit of a sun behind there. And I'm gonna grab a paper towel. I always have a paper towel in my hand. I do some dry brushing and things, so I always like to have it handy to make sure my brush is dry. When I go into a new color, the craft paints, especially for the acrylics, are a little translucent. So I don't want any water in my brush from rinsing my brush. I'm always trying to dry it well. And I'm going to do a little bit of a yellow into some pink, into some blue. I want a little bit of uh, color in the sky. And I'm going to just get a little bit more yellow. The thing with the acrylic paints as opposed to my oil paints, for instance, is the drying time. I don't have a lot of time to blend. So I try to force my acrylics sometimes to behave like oil paints. I try to put the paint on and then blend quickly when I'm working. So it's a little trickier, but the advantages of working in the acrylics are, are, are worth it. The paint dries um, quicker, so you don't have to wait you know, weeks and months for your painting to dry. The cleanup is easier. You're not using, you know, um, turpentine and uh, mediums and things like that if you have an allergy or you just don't like them. I love them. I love the smell of the oil paints, but that's not everybody's jam. And acrylics are a great way to get started. I do some uh, segments in watercolor. I will do a little more of that. I haven't in a while. I'm going to go to a bigger brush because I really want to start mixing that paint a little bit. Um, yeah, Donna, I painted one before and it really is cool. And Cecile from Canada, thank you for popping in again. I so appreciate it. So I've got a little bit of a yellow in there for my sunset sky. But can you see I'm taking white now and I'm just sort of around the edges of the yellow. I'm blending that wet paint with white. And that gives me a little buffer because I want to go into a pink now. But I don't want the pink and the yellow to mix. I want it to stay kind of vibrant. Um, I don't want it to get a little bit of a green tone. So I put a little buffer of white there. And now I go in with my pink. And can you see it's almost blending by magic there because the paint is wet and wet. That's why I work a little fast sometimes. Not only because we have 45-minute segments, but because I want the paint to blend. I am taking that pink and that yellow paint and I'm softly blending. That's another case where I want my brush dry. I'm always wiping my brush off, kind of a dry dirty brush and I'm using that to blend. And now I'm going to get a little bit pinker. Now that I've got that little buffer there, I can get my sky a little pinker. I really have been, and you guys have heard it a thousand times, into like pinks and teals. And since I moved down to Florida here, um, I've sort of been into all those cool color, tropical colors. It's been fun. And actually, I, I think, figured we wouldn't do another Valentine's today. We'll start thinking more spring and Easter. I see all the wonderful projects. Melanie, did you see Melanie with that adorable little cutting board she did? That was great. Um, who's coming up next? We have Nadia's Crafty Corner. So stick around, you guys, on Craft Around the Clock and uh, see what we got cooked up for you today. If I need to blend a little more, I think it's blended fine, but I can go in. I'm using just a white paint sort of to blend it, just to soften that. And I want to bring my pink sky maybe up to about here. So let me get taking, just mixing on my brush. I'd like to have you see my palette sometimes too. 
uh, to see how I'm grabbing my paint. So it's, I'll scooch it in a little bit there. And I'm getting in a little more pink, a little white. I mix it on the palette. I do that on purpose. I don't want to say, oh, I want a pink. Let me mix up the perfect shade of pink and use that. I rather go and mix on the fly because the paint is, it, the, then it would look more natural. You've got some lights and you've got some darks. Still wet. I can take a little darker pink if I want to have a little darker in places. And then I just soften it, keep drying off that brush. And just soften, soften, soften. I'm going to go into a blue sky eventually, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of just dry off my brush, get a little white in a, as a buffer. I do this mostly in skies because skies, sometimes you want a green sky. I've done a little tinge of a blue green sky and it's kind of a stormy kind of a cool look but generally you don't want to go you know into um using the pink and then into a yellow and then you know just don't want to get those so that would be an orange sky but um, that works sometimes i just want to be careful with the colors that i'm blending so i use a little white as a buffer i'm going to get into my blue now i have a very dark phthalo blue there so i'm adding a lot of white because i want it to be a little lighter I'd rather go light here, and then if I need to, I could just go right in and add some dark. I would like to get some clouds started while this is all wet, and it is still wet. So I'm going to scoot this in pretty quick so that I can try to get some little blended clouds. I have whole tutorials on painting clouds, you guys. I know it's a little tricky, but it's not really that hard. I have a YouTube channel with a lot of little uh, free classes and tutorials there, and there is one on painting clouds. A simple way just to get started there's all kinds of different ways you can paint them but if you would like to learn to paint you know follow me along and uh, I have some you know I always do some free little classes and free tutorials but like I said I also have the art membership and what I'm doing now because so many people have asked about particular classes they want um, I'm putting them up on my website so that if you want just a particular class you could just download that class it's not done yet my business is Tinker's Cart Art, but if you keep an eye or follow me or, you know, send me a message to be on my email list, I will keep you informed if you want to just buy a class or two. That's a good way to get started. See if you like the way I teach. But I am here every week on Craft Around the Clock, too. So quickly got a little sky in there. I know it looks very um, layered, and I want to have it blended a little more. Thank you, Deb. I so appreciate the sprinkling. You guys, it really helps us out a lot, and thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to just throw in while it's wet some white where a cloud will go. I rather start my clouds really super light, almost blending in with the background, hardly even seen, and then slowly as it dries, build it up a little more. I build up the top of my clouds pretty bright. The bottom I like to have fade away. And like I said, this is a little ambitious project for our quick segment. So you will get um, some great information right now, like on the clouds and that sort of thing. And I'll just give you some ideas what things you can paint on, unusual things, different things. I want some clouds kind of going right down into the to the area where there'll be a little sunset. And that's already softening the what looked like lines to me. I might take a little of the pink and maybe put it up here so that it's just softening it and not making it look like blue, pink, yellow. The longer I can have this stay wet, the better. I may take a tiny bit of light blue and put that in down in the sky here and there. What I'm doing now is just getting away from that visual of it being sort of uh, just those striped colors. I think a little yellow in the sky would be nice. So let me clean my brush. If I'm going from a color to a darker color, I just wipe it off. If I'm going to go into white or a light color, I do rinse it. But again, I am really squeezing that paint off. Hi, Sandy. Thank you, guys. Let me get a little of that yellow. And I want a little yellow in the sky. I'll go over it with some white, maybe tone it down. My shape of my clouds, I kind of do them all sort of the same shape. I get a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a bump in the middle, and I kind of go down to almost straight across the bottoms. It's I know it's like a little methodical, um, but it seems to work. You vary them up. You don't ever want all the same shapes. You kind of vary it. But I don't like to make a cloud that's all bumpy on the top and then bumpy on the bottom like that too much. It looks sort of pasted on. I'd like to soften the colors in a little bit. 
So, oh, Barbara, thank you. That's fabulous. I appreciate that rating. That is great. Um, okay, I'll come back and play with the sky a little bit, but I want it to dry a bit. We'll go into our water. I do my ocean water a lot the same way. Just bury the colors to get a few different shades. I absolutely love the Liquitex for the phthalo green and phthalo blue to make oceans. It gives you those all the shades of teal that you would ever want. Yes, sure, you can go and buy all of the wonderful teals in the craft paints, which I do because they're so tempting, but all you need is phthalo green and blue, and you can get every shade of teal, which is what I love to do my oceans with. I go right with the blue and the green, the phthalo. And the back side of my ocean, I want it to be darker. So here's my tricky bit. I just throw my brush under the um, strings. And I know it's a little tricky, but it's not bad. It's not, it's not anything that's impossible. I do the very back of my ocean the darkest. So that's where my just the straight phthalo blue and green is going to go. And as I get down, I start lightening it with some white. And again, I am trying to keep my paint wet so that I can blend as I go. I'm going to have to really watch my time today because... I knew coming on that this wouldn't be a completely finished thing, but I didn't think you guys would mind because it shows you the process. And I and I did when I painted my last one, people had so many questions about it. I thought, well, this way you can actually see me working on it. So I'm gonna get that little area wet under here with the paint. And then I'm gonna go in and add some white. Whenever I blend, I know I show you, I'm always doing like little X-y strokes, getting a little texture in the sky or the land. But when I do water, I'm always back and forth. So you will see me do that uh, different way of uh, adding the colors in. So it's it's almost a cool look because this paint, again, is a little translucent. So if you can see the light that shows through from the white background, just because the paint's a little translucent, really can work for you uh, for the look of the water. Same brush, I might wipe it off a little bit. And I'm going to take a little white now. Oh, Cecile, thank you. I think so too. I like to play around with skies. You never know what's gonna work. But you know what? The other great thing about acrylics is if you don't like it, you paint over it. So it's not something you have to live with forever. So don't be afraid to experiment and play. That's the best part. You're supposed to be enjoying this. It's not really what it comes out to look like all the time. It's more of the experience is my uh, mantra. Okay, so I'm getting a little white in there, streaking it back and forth. I'm not going to fuss too much with under the strings because that just takes a little time. I'd rather show you what I'm doing. I will take my brush now a lot of times maybe and just take the white paint just on the chisel edge and I can scooch back and forth like this and get some little like white caps sort of in there. I'm going to do that a little bit. I may go back in with some dark and do it again. And I will do, the, I'll repeat this under the strings later. Don't, let's not worry about the strings now. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm going to make some waves closer to the shore, but way back, you're not going to see big waves. You're going to just see the little white caps. Sometimes even if I need a little bit more of a white cap, I just dip the brush corner in the white and I can sort of, sort of pat it a little bit and then just streak it. And I get like what will appear without any work really as a little, um, like a little wave. I, I hit the string. It's, I wish I knew how to play a musical instrument. It would be kind of cool, but uh, oh, I dropped a piece of paper towel in here. I do not know how, but look, it made a kind of a nice little wave actually. So I might just kind of make that into a little wave. As we get closer to shore, we'll have more uh, defined waves. So let's bring our, our blue down a little more. It's going to get a little lighter, like I say, to the shore. I'm going to grab a little more green. I want a little more of a like a turquoisey kind of kind of uh, water. Can you see the different shades you get with just those two colors? Though they're fabulous. I know. I look at my time. I didn't put my watch on today. Twelve thirty. We start at twelve fifteen. We have till one o'clock. We have quite a bit of time left, so no worries there. You'll see when I get down here, I want to re-wet this color and so I can bring it softly into the sand and not have a harsh line like that. But let's worry about that once we get all this color on. I'm going to get back up here and sort of blend those colors. If I get paint somewhere else on the piece or if you get paint anywhere that you don't want it, just plain old, let me see if I can get, just plain old rubbing alcohol will uh, take that off. So I always have that handy for mistakes and things. 
Uh, color blue. Cecile, I am using my favorite two colors for water. It is Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. It's Liquitex acrylic fluids. Now, these are not pricey. These are double what you get in your craft paints. It's four ounces versus two. They're about five bucks, so they're not pricey. And I cannot find, of all the... Um, the uh, greens and blues I can find in craft paints, none are as a pure pigment as that. So I have tried and tried so I can tell you guys what uh, craft paints to buy with to get this look or for many other things. <clears throat> I always, I can, I can never find one that's that pure. So those colors plus the uh, primary yellow, not the cad, but the primary, you mix that with the green, you'll see I'll get some beautiful lime greens. Um, worth having at least those three colors. In that Liquitex line, I always like the Payne's Gray, too. I, I use that rather than a black. So I just love those colors. They last a long time, and I've tried to match them in other, like I say, other brands, but for for what I'm doing with it, that's the best. So I can even take my go back to my dark blue-green that I started with with no white mixed, just the dark. And I can, with the chisel edge, if I find it was too light somewhere or I just want to put some darks in, I'm just using the chisel edge of the brush and going across. Yes, you could use a liner, but I'm pretty comfortable with the chisel edge. And this brush is not even got a good chisel edge, and it's working pretty good for me. So I just want to get some lights and darks in there. Paint's starting to dry, so I'll just work into it um, the best I can. And if it Ever you're trying to blend and your paint has dried, you can re-wet it. It's not a problem. So see how I've gotten a little lighter. I think I need to get a little lighter still. I as can see, and I know I've told you this guy, you guys this, but if you're having want to see really what you're doing, we're painting too close. You're not going to get the full effect. You need to stand back. You need to be watching, you know, seeing it from afar where your viewer would see it. And what works for me is while I'm filming is I can see more by looking at the video there what I need to do. It looked a little bit not light, it looked not light enough down here from the video. So I'm going to go in and really lighten up some areas there. I really want it to be light towards the shore. I think I need a little more green. I like that really greeny, maybe a little yellow. I like that little greeny color you get as the water gets towards the shore. I'm going to dry off and get a little more of my white caps in there. And I'm going to take some of the colors from the sky and streak them in just like this as well. Sometimes I wait for it to be dry because, again, I don't want to take a little bit of a yellow and end up with a green. I want it to be yellow. So I sometimes yellow is transparent. So sometimes I would even base coat something in white if I'm going over a dark area. Let it dry and then I put my yellow on. Sometimes your yellow straight on is not going to show up. But let's get a little bit of pinks and yellows and see if we can get that. The water's drying back there. Many times I don't know what the paint is going to look like. I'm mixing a light pink to put into the water. It may be too light. It may be too dark. There's no way to tell until you just put it in there and then adjust. So it's a little bit uh, too light pink because it looks white almost. So I'm just going to add a little more pigment. And then after a while, I'll know how much to add in there. Little, I'm not putting big strokes in there. I'm doing really just little lines. If you can see the finished little water here, can you see how I put little lines and then I dot to make those little sparkles. I love putting sparkles in water and I almost can't wait to do that. So sometimes I do it really too soon, but I think it's so fun. So a little bit of pink in that water just as a reflection of the sky. And I'm going to do the same with yellow. I know it's hard to see from the camera here, but I will pull that up for you as we go. I'm doing the same thing. I'm mixing some white with the yellow. And it just helps it to be a little more opaque. And I will put in some. And, and actually, I mostly want some of this yellow under here. So again, like I said, I'm going to address this part later because that's a little picky. But under my sunset is where most of the yellow will be. So I'll get a little, a good bit of yellow back there, maybe more pink here. But I'm going to get my sand color on now so that I can get a nice blend of that water coming onto the sand or maybe little waves. We'll do some waves. Actually, let's do some waves there. If we wanted to do some waves, again, I take just some white paint on the corner of my brush. I kind of make a little bit of a wave and just bring it over. I'm going to reload and maybe get a little more of a wave. 
And the trick to the waves is after after a little bit, I put a little darker blue under where they're turning over, and sometimes that nearly nice lime green under there. With sometimes if a wave is breaking, you're looking at the sun's shining through. It's that really lime green light color. It's really kind of nice. Um, so I'm going to just place the waves, and I'll have to come back and, and really do the the details more. And you would never see the waves this big way back here. Like I said, they're sort of just breaking. I'm going to put a little white down here so I can blend that light blue right into my sand, which I'm going to put on next. And I will clean my brush. Now, I use this color, Buttermilk, from DecoArt an awful lot, too. It is a nice ivory color. I love it for sand. I love it for just not, if I didn't want to use a harsh white, a cold, bright white, I like to tone it down, have it a little more of a warmer color. I'm still just using this flat brush. I could go for a bigger brush for this sort of area, but since it's in my hand, I'm just going to put a little bit of sand here, which I'll show you how I will make it look a little bit like it's walked on in texture. But for now, I want to get a blend of that water softly coming into the sand. So I'm just softening this buttermilk color into the wet teal color that's already there. And now I'm going to just wash my brush off and get some of that light blue and bring it down. And I've got plenty of that watercolor here, but I want it really light. I'm adding a good bit of water to it. And I'm just going to lightly bring that down onto the sand. In case you can't see it, it's, it's a little hard to see because I have it so light. Um, I can make it a little darker just for the camera's sake. See that? But then I want to really soften it because it, it's if I use a little white in here, it almost looks like when the that little tiny tiny traces of water comes up on the sand, and you see the sand through it. I sort of get that effect. A, a golden ochre, a yellow ochre, is what I use to shade on the sand color. But you know what? I I started to pull it on my dirty brush. I have blue on the brush. I'm gonna get a green if I mix in there, and I don't want a greeny look to my sand. So this is just that. It's like a yellow ochre color. There's a few different shades. Uh, DecoArt has a one It's called golden, golden ochre. And I could just lightly put that in. It's almost like it's a little shadow underneath that water that's coming in. Blending with my sand because that's still a little wet. And I know it seems to me maybe it's coming through in your end better. I can't really see, the, uh, see it from there yet. So I'm going to put it in a little heavier. And then I even take white and just... So I got a little shadow with the yellow ochre color, a little highlight with the white. If you watch me paint many times, it's kind of my 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 uh, method. I have an object, and it's a middle value of the color. I have a darker shade of that color for the shadows and a lighter shade or white for the highlights. It's, uh, again, a, a little bit of a method, but it works. Makes a flat object look three-dimensional when you can add some highlights and some shading. Oh, thanks, Pam. Yes, yeah, Cindy, right? Jimmy Buffett. Yes. So... We've got a good start on our, our piece here. We've probably got 15 minutes left or so. I like to put some foliage on the sides of my beaches so that I have some place to plant some uh, folk, some palm trees and maybe a little bit of palm leaves and things. Oh, Cecile, have you seen my, my latest go-to has been gold leaf. So yes, I have been, I did a session uh, here on Craft Around the Clock in using the gold leaf. I've been incorporating it in my paintings and I have some how-tos about that. So yeah, we've been having a blast with gold leaf. And you can probably go on my page and just scroll back and you will see some of those uh, uh, segments. And you may see the segments, I believe on, on YouTube, I I am, when I'm, uh, Recording to you, uh, recording live to you guys now. It's on my page and as well as it goes to YouTube. So check YouTube for some of the replays of these little segments. If you can't find something ever, just holler. I am going to put some foliage here. So again, I start dark a lot of times. I want a really dark green and I'm going to build it up to that really light lime green. But it would not have the impact. The lime green, like on these fronds, would not have the impact if they weren't against an almost black green background. I went from very dark black green, lighter green, middle, middle green, and these light little lime green segments. And that's what you need is, so you need to go extra dark even though it almost looks like black sometimes. I'm using Payne's gray in my green, a little bit of blue maybe. This is just gonna be a little area for some foliage um, that I'm going to bring down. Sometimes I just do it as sand, and then I put a little foliage at the base of the palm trees, but I wanted to do this one a little different. So that's my base, and I'm going to have to let that dry 
It's a little streaky. I want it to be more black, dark green. So I need to let that dry into a second coat. So we're going to leave that for a little bit. Um, but what I can do is go back in and show you how I now finesse the clouds a little bit. Yeah, and if you don't find it, Cecile, send me a message and I can send you some links. Hi, Sheila. Thanks for popping in. Hello. Um, so I've got just vague little bits of clouds, but now I'm building them up to be a little brighter, taking a little bit of the white paint again. See how I sideload my brush a lot for the waves and for the clouds? Oh, Janice, thank you. And, and welcome from Canvas. Th Canvas. <laughs> I got Canvas on my brain. Kansas. Thank you for being here. And I'm using the little side that I loaded to the top of the cloud. So I might go and just go right around the tippy top, a little bit of more of a bubble, and then I sort of bring it straight, and a little bubble and straight. And I can even work right in front of that and make another one that say it's overlapping a little. It's the simplest technique for clouds, but it does do the job on something like this where it's just a little whimsical, kind of a fun painting. Um, and as this dries and fades a little bit, I'll come back and make just the tippy tops maybe a little bit um, brighter white too. So wherever you want... I almost don't want to pay too much attention because I don't want to, sometimes I tend to get them all in the same shape and I really want to avoid that. So that's a little way to get some little clouds in there. I go back when it's dry sometimes and add a little bit of a yellow tone to the underside, like a little sunshine showing through. If I want more of a stormy cloud, I'll go back and add a little bit of a purpley to the bottom of those clouds, which I might do for this. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. Um, oh, and Dahlia. Oh, from Darche Designs. Thank you, guys. We have many creators that are on here as well from Craft Around the Clock. So give them a welcome. And please, um, guys, put your uh, page, your your uh, business page on there so people can follow you as well. Uh, oh, darling, yeah, that's okay. All righty. So I'm going to um, plant a few pine uh, palm trees in here so you can see how I paint those. We've got... Um, Got how many minutes left? Not uh, maybe about 10 minutes, 10, 15, 10, 12 minutes left. So again, here's a case where the uh, paint is a little, needs a little help with the coverage. So I will put my palm tree in, but make a few coats. Again, on this even, I'm starting with almost a black. Uh, I'm gonna grab a black. I usually use just paint gray, but I need it to be a little bit more opaque if I can find my black paint. Um, you know, I used to keep it in order, but, you know, how can we keep that up? It's a dark. Here we are. So I like paint gray mostly when I'm doing shading and that sort of thing because it's a blue gray. I don't like to shade things with, um, uh, I don't like to use straight black a lot of times. It's just too dark and kind of dull when you mix it. But I need a little base here of a dark brown, like I said, almost black. And I'm just going to, I just like to make my, palm trees a little thinner at the top, a little thicker as they go. They're wonky kind of shapes, so nothing, so anything goes. It doesn't have to be just right. It could be straight up. It could be leaning. I'm making mine leaning a little bit. And these, and this is covering really well, I think, maybe because I put that black in there. Oops. I'm hitting my, I knew this was going to be a little bit wonky, hard to work with because of the shape, but I like to put a few. I like to put things in threes a lot for design, design wise. That's a good way uh, to, uh, to make sure you get a nice composition, you get three of something. Just vary the sizes. So we've got a big one there. We've got a little smaller one there. Actually, I'll do my third over here. And that's just a little key if you're trying to design your paintings and different things. Threes, varying sizes is always a good choice. That looks like it's a little bit like to that size, but okay. And for the little fronds on the top, same thing, very dark, kind of a black um, green. And thank you, Dahlia, appreciated. We, we do love it as creators to create for you here and online and on our pages. And it's what we do, but it's nice to have you guys participate by, like I say, just a comment or even just an emoji or a thumbs up or a heart. Um, or spreading it out. It just makes everything we do worthwhile. It really helps us grow our uh, our pages. So simply, you could sketch this if you want, um, but I just like to go in and make where my fronds are going to go like this. And I'm going to have it go right off the edge, which is fine. 
And then I keep my paint a little thinner. Paint's been sitting out, but also I want a thinner line. And I just go and make those palm fronds like this with my brush. So it's just almost looking like a silhouette. And sometimes on your real vibrant um, sunsets, you could simply do it all black as a silhouette. I, I liked color too much to do that. So I usually make a darker shade if I need to. But I am just going to make those little fronds, which I'm going to let dry and go over and do the same thing with a middle shade of green and then a lighter shade of green, finishing with that really lime green. But this is how I like to start, very dark. And you probably, I probably have other things out there that I've painted very much like this. I'm sure I've painted some of these as little demos that you'll find the whole tutorial. So now we've got two trees, one's in front of the other, so I don't have to worry about just bringing some down. And like I said, I'm going to come in here after with my little brush and address this little bit behind the strings a little better. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I have these little pointy bits of the palm uh, leaves. Sometimes I do it just with one side. That could be smooth on the top and it's just this way. Sometimes I have the little spiky bits coming out from both sides. It doesn't matter. It's just They're fun to paint. They're really fun. There's not a lot of work to them. It's just getting the brush strokes down. Brush strokes are great to practice. I'm using my chisel edge. You could certainly use a liner brush if you wanted. Um, and the trick is keeping the paint to the right consistency so it's thinned down a little bit. I always go from the center of the leaf out. I always, I don't want to start out here and go in. You won't have that nice little point. So start at the center and, and work out. And it's simple as that. I'm going to have that, I have the color of my brush. Let me just give a little bit of a dark bit to some of this for now. Oh yeah, let's do sparkles in the waters too because that is the fit my favorite thing. Let's do that now. Hey, kid, how are you? Oh, nice to see you. And Jane, thank you. Yes, I am having a blast here. I am loving it in here in Florida for the winters. And uh, yeah. Okay, so I want to get a little more of the white little highlights in the water. So again, I just try not to put my hand in that stuff. So I'm going to just kind of I almost am not making a perfect line across. Can you see how I'm sort of like dabbing it a little bit? So it's kind of a little irregular and more of a shape that you would find looking far out for some white caps. And some, like I said, I could just pick a little bit more paint on the edge and dab it a little bit thicker. Not too far back when they get that much uh, action going on in the wave, though. But you can get those lines wherever. And I am adding a little water to my paint because it's been sitting out paint consistency I'm always adding water kind of tough because you know the paints translucent for the craft paint but sometimes you just need to add that these little waves I put in the front I'm almost going to dab across the top so it's a little thicker there almost looking like a little spray I think we're better off kind of concentrating on these waves now at the end of this segment what I said about a dark when the waves are in front and turning over I like a little shadow under that um where the wave is breaking. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of a darker, the blue green that we used, but it's gonna be thinned down. I don't want a harsh line. I want it to be a little darker under here. Let me lift it and see if I can do it like balancing it this way. I'll put a little paints gray in there too to make it a little darker. So just underneath this wave, say just where the white is and where it's turning over, I'm just gonna go under with a little bit of a darker color of the water. I'm gonna rinse my brush and use just a little water, just a damp brush to soften it. I don't want it to look like a harsh line. So I'm bringing it in and down and just softening that a little bit. And that I would do under all the waves. I love to make that lime green. So taking my phthalo green, which I was showing you with the, uh, the Liquitex and a little of that primary yellow. It makes a beautiful green, a little white. It makes a beautiful green. And under when these waves turn over sometime, that's where you get that little green look. Can you see it a little bit? It's I know it's tough with the blue underneath, but I just put that in there. And I take that lime green color and I do some little line work with that here and there too. I want that to be out in the water as well. But the fun part is taking a little toothpick or a stylus or a tip of your brush even, 
let's try the tip of a little detail brush or I have some styluses, little bits of white. I want the pure white where it's not mixed with something else and I want it kind of thick so I'm not watering this down. And I'm gonna take it just on the tip of the brush. It's just not an easy way to grab this thing. And, and I'm going to just dot random. Some are bigger, some are littler. And I just love this look. I use it in any kind of, kind of water I paint, if it's a lake or a river or a waterfall. So I put it like around the wave there, like you know how the waves would splash. And let me see if I can get a real close up of this for you. Let's see. I can see the little dots kind of. But I do that throughout the water too. So sometimes I will go ahead on where I have done a little white line and I might just add a little bit of sparkle there. Sometimes it's just random. Usually a thinner bit of sparkles going horizontal and maybe a few up and it just looks like sparkles. Even down here where it's coming up on the shore a little bit, you can have it a little bit that way. But I'm not doing a whole line across the whole horizon. I'm just doing little bits here and there. Sometimes it's maybe just a couple and sometimes it's a little grouping, you know, just do a couple. Uh, let's see if you can kind of see, see them a little bit there. Really fun. That adds a really cool touch. All right, we have five minutes, you guys. Um, let me show you a little bit what I meant about in the fronds here of getting different shades. So now I've got that dark green. I'm going to use that same brush. And this is a nice brush. I like this brush a lot. It's a flat brush. But see how the, it's a little longer? It allows me to load a lot more paint. And uh, I just like the flexibility I get. This was just from Michael's. It's very inexpensive. I think it's a La Royal Langnickel. And I just went and bought another one because I just love the way it performs. So I'm using my same green, some yellow. I'm just making a lighter tone than that's there. I make a lighter tone. I don't know if it's going to show up till I actually try it on the tree. And then I adjust as I go. So it's just the green and the yellow now. And I'm going right over what I did and making just these little pokey things. And it shows up a little bit lighter. It, I know it's, at least it looks hard to see it for the camera there for me, but it's just exactly what I did. I'm not struggling and trying to perfectly hit every stroke I made. I am just going over it. And what I want to do is leave some of that dark showing. So I'm not trying to cover all the dark. I like to have that show through a bit. And I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to go and just lighten this same color with some white and just keep building up till I get a nice bit that pops. I would like to let this dry a little bit um, before I get that very last light bit on because I really want that to pop. This little second go round, you, you don't really see too much, but it is important. And again, I'm still going from the center of that frond out to get those little points. And we have three minutes, so I'll stop my, my goodbye spiel. Is um, I appreciate you all coming out and watching. Stick around. We have Nadia's Crafty Corner, I believe, next. I don't know what she's doing, but I'm sure it will be cool. And sometimes I just have Craft Around the Clock going in the background while I'm working or doing something else because I just love to, I love the community and I love to just see what people are up to, get some great ideas. I'm, I'm more of a painter, but I do like to craft. I'm learning so much from everyone here on this uh, Craft Around the Clock page, things I probably would have never tried. So you might discover some cool new things too. Um, and so now you see uh, two coats. I'm going to try with the same color. I'm adding a little white, and I'm going to try it to see, does, does it pop? Does it show up? A little bit. I'd rather use like a number of coats like this building up to the last. The last one's going to be really a light green, and I'm going to let it dry first. But already you can see those little individual uh, palm leaves like this. But I really need you to see the dark behind it too. So again, I am not thinking about it. I'm just making them randomly on top and making sure I do leave some of the dark. I go through and put a few uh, turquoise blue little <clears throat> lines like this too here and there just because I like to take whatever colors I'm using in my painting and putting it places it really doesn't belong, but there could be a little reflection on a shiny leaf of the water or whatnot. But I will. You saw me put some of the pink and yellow into the water here, some of the blue into the sand. I'll do the same thing. <clears throat> the grasses and the foliage here are done the same way. I would just do little 
spiky bits, dark green, middle green, light green, even lighter green, and then some colors that don't belong. I'll put on some little pink flowers probably down there. Um, right, Suzanne? Yeah, it really is cool. Hello, Carol, and you're in Iowa. Uh, it does look like a vacation destination, and that's, I mean, that's, in the winter, isn't it fun to paint these sorts of things? But uh, I'm glad it's getting warmer there, and thank you. Um, I would appreciate if you all would just pop up and give me a little follow on my page. That is, um, I am very close to 9,000. I'm trying to get there, so you guys can help me with that. I'm very close. Even more, um, one more minute. So I'm going to uh, sign off in a second. I want you guys to maybe ref refresh the page after a minute or so so you see the next crafter. And I'll post pictures of this when it's done. And uh, just check my page for that and see how I go now with an even lighter bit. And as it gets lighter, I do less and less. So it's not as much. I got to go. You have to watch the rest of the crafters. Bye, guys. See you next week.